procurement um, has moved up uh, in the significance, I think that is clear if you think about automotive or other, other industries. Uh, but uh, when it comes to indirect procurement, um, that uh, so far has been maybe a bit of a neglected uh, potential. Uh, when we speak uh, to our potential clients, we see easily that they leave uh, anything between 5 to 30% of their top line on the table just uh, in the area of indirect. Uh, mm. depending on the industry they're in, so that uh, that kind of potential is there. When we speak with uh, potential clients, uh, we very often see that indirect procurement uh, is really not their core business. Mm. And uh, then there's a good uh, business case uh, to really consider outsourcing to a company like ours, ChainIQ. Um, for us, it's core business. We, we do that uh, in and out every day for us, for, that is um, our living. So. Uh, we're doing that um, very professionally, we're doing it at scale, uh, so we're creating also a lot of um, purchasing power by volume bundling. So that is uh, also things, even if a client does procurement well, uh, the volume bundling is uh, something that uh, we can provide and they cannot. So for a number of reasons, um, we, we are really proposing the outsourcing of indirect procurement to a provider like ourselves. Marketplaces um, are attractive because uh, they provide competitive prices. So competitiveness is one of the things. Uh, the other thing that a marketplace uh, provides is compliance. So uh, a lot of what is left on the table is just for, due to the lack of compliance and controls uh, that people just go and uh, purchase uh, anywhere out of any uh, control function. So that's the compliance piece. And then, um, in, and that makes it really magnificent uh, to consider a marketplace then there's a lot so the convenience piece. And um, what Darren said about uh, procurement people, that really applies to any user in a company. So any person in a company who has a requisition, he doesn't want to go to a highly complicated uh, bureaucratic monolithical system and uh, try to enter somehow an order with uh, all the master data behind it and juggle around with that. Uh, or wait for a procurement person to come back and do it for them. So they don't want to do that. What they what they really want to do is they all privately purchase from, let's say, Amazon or other marketplaces. And that is the cool thing about a marketplace also in B2B, because the user experience, I mean, you said B2B and B2C doesn't compare it actually in the user experience, it does. Mm -hmm. So in the user experience, it is as cool as a employee to purchase something as, as a private person, you purchase something for Christmas. That is exactly the same splendid user experience. What you need for a successful marketplace is a number of uh, ingredients. One of them is you need great technology. Uh, that is taken care of by TradeShift and um, so we're very happy that it is, this is not an issue anymore, it's available. So thanks to TradeShift for that. But what you also need on the marketplace is obviously uh, the buyers and the sellers as such. And um, if you just, you know, start uh, on a green field, it will be very hard. Uh, it's like the chicken and egg dilemma. It's, it will be very, very hard to at the same time bring the buyers in as uh, the rele relevant sellers and vice versa. So, and this is where Chain IQ comes in. So we already have the relationships. We have the clients, we have the sellers. So we bring them in in an orchestrated way at the same time. And, um, and that, I think, is uh, really this um, momentum that you need to create on a marketplace that you really have trade and that it is uh, commercially interesting and successful.